welcome back. We are scanning an MRI lumbar spine today, currently running our three-plane localizer or scout. Okay, so, you know, the MRI lumbar spine is essentially the bread and butter. It's very similar to the chest x-ray for radiography plane film. So uh, a majority of the cases that you will see are these MRI lumbar spines. Okay, usually ruling out, um, you know, disc herniation in the lower back, you know, post-operative, um, you know, changes, you know, sometimes there's going to be some hardware in there, so we're going to need a little bit of, um, you know, metal suppression. But as we see here, we are aligning our saturation bands uh, just anterior to the spine to reduce any sort of respiratory or abdominal motion that would ensue on these images. Okay, so what we can see is we're copying the uh, exact positioning of all of the sagittals to the T1 and the stir. That way everything is, you know, exactly alike, uh, slice thickness and field of view. So now we're plotting the axial images where there are two types of ways of doing, um, you know, axials. It depends on the site. Again, I always say no site is created equally, um, but this is a disc study. So there are only going to be a couple of slices through the discs and then into the bone. Um, in some cases, you know, a imaging center might do two big slabs covering everything and not kind of overlapping like this. Uh, because with the back here, you can have a little bit of crosstalk, which causes an artifact. Um, which does, just doesn't look pretty, but this is a quicker way of doing um, axial imaging uh, to assess the disc, uh, you know, pathology or disc herniations. Uh, but again, it does just look a little bit messy. So uh, it depends on the imaging center or hospital that you're working in. So also keep note that uh, when you're scanning an MRI, there's always at least one sequence being scanned. So you can see here, uh, the sagittal T2 is kind of running as we're plotting the axial T2s. Okay, so you always got to be doing something when we're scanning, okay? Yep, so don't worry, we're still scanning. So you can see here the sagittal T2 is still scanning. So just now that we have our axials plotted, we're waiting for the sagittal co to complete so we can just confirm the, um, the angles of these axials. Confirm it quick and then start it up again. All right, here's the sagittal T2. Uh, so now what we want to do is just confirm, uh, because again, we plotted these axials on the scout. So we want to confirm that uh, they're angled directly through the intervertebral disc. So what we do is a quick a little assessment of any pathology, any herniations, anything that needs to be adjusted will be adjusted. Uh, make sure that that um, saturation band is not pushing right on the spine because then you're clipping uh, or basically putting a sat band on the spine. You don't want that. So you just want it a little anterior, uh, and this is pretty much great. So one area I want to make you aware of is this area down here. This is the parameters and options sec section. So as you um, start to learn a little bit more about um, the field of view and the parameters that make up a sequence, a lot of these are essentially protocols that are input by the chief MRI technologist or imaging center. So uh, normally not going to touch them. You're really just going to plot the exams um, and then, you know, essentially make sure that you're covering everything and sending those exams off to essentially get read. All right. So 
the sagittal T1 is just finishing up right now. We can see here on the left uh, just a little bit more. So once that comes out, we can then start the next sequence. And this is almost on a autopilot where once everything's plotted, they essentially just continue to scan over and over and over again. If you start seeing some motion, so here's that sagittal T1 to the left. Uh, if you start seeing some motion on these images, I would probably hit the pause button and communicate with the patient uh, and you know essentially see how they're doing okay um, if usually if there's no issues and you had some good communication up front with the patient there's really no reason to stop the case you know so uh, just keep it going as long as the images are coming through now that we have the axial t2 running um, we're able to essentially basically finish off the exam at this point. Uh, once this axial comes out, the last two sequences, the sagittal stir and the axial T1, which were copied from the prior uh, sequences, will just pretty much run. So uh, if all goes well, this exam should be done in less than three minutes, three to four minutes. So that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at what these axials will look like as they come out. Make sure there's no motion on them. And they should be appearing now. Looks like this is finishing up right now. All right, good. Scroll through. Good, no motion, looks fantastic. Um, a little bit of that dark stuff in the back is crosstalk, which is because we overlap those slices. All right, I hope you enjoyed the uh, MRI lumbar spine.